Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are moving to the next section on transient, transient state calculation using Nash elastic band. Uh, we are a little bit ahead of the schedule, so we will try to finish this session before going to break, so you can have a little bit more time from, for, the, for the few last sessions. Um, okay, so in this section, I will cover on the using WAS to compute the chemical reaction, and also uh, use WAS to calculate the uh, transient state and also the, the uh, activation energy. The method we use in WAS is called Nash elastic band. But let me, uh, let's go into the basic of the chemical reaction just a bit before we go into the method itself. So the chemical reaction is basically you want to find the path of the, uh, the reaction from one chemical to the other chemical passing through one the so-called transient state. This is based on the transient state theory which is a statistical theory to explain the elementary step reaction of the slow thermal process, crossing from one uh, local minimum to the other local minimum. Uh, so to look at the picture, you can imagine of the uh, potential energy as a terrain, right? In, in fact, in our, uh, in our calculation, you have a multi-dimensional of the uh, space but let's say it's a 2D dimension. Imagine you are crossing the, 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 the mountain. So, uh, so chemical reaction, let's say you want to find a reaction from A to B passing through the transient state A star. And that is a way to cross up the one of the valley, crossing to one of the uh, mountain here to the other kind of valley. Uh, you have to go to the lowest path, right, to, 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 to reduce the energy that you have to cross. And this is what we call, uh, so A is a, is a reactant, and B is the product, and A star is a transient state, or it's the first order starter point along the, the two paths, uh, along the, the two uh, reaction and product. So, and uh, we are not fully using the uh, transient state theory. Many times we, in fact, use only the harmonic transient state theory. So basically, it's a good approximation for solid in a relatively low temperature. What, what, what defines the low temperature? In fact, it's defined as a second saddle point. Uh, the, the distance between the second saddle point and the uh, transient state should be larger than KBT. Uh, if you have this condition using harmonic transient state, it's okay. Uh, so uh, for harmonic transient state, you can use it to find rate of chemical reaction based on this uh, equation. Uh, this is also agree with the empirical Arrhenius law, if, if we use that. And when we look at the chemical reaction, there's another term called the minimum energy path, or MEP. So MEP is actually the path that uh, the lowest energy path from one stable configuration to the other, or sometimes we call it reaction coordinate. So let's say if you are cross, try to cross a mountain, you are at the one side of the mountain A, and you want to cross to the other side B. What is the minimum energy path? Basically, it's the way that you go from A to the, to the kind of like, to the less height of the mountain between the two sides. If you're going in this direction, you can also cross to the other side, but it's not the minimum energy path. You have to go to the lowest one. And this is the mark, the, the uh, saddle point, and that's defined the transition state. So the question is, how can you find this minimum energy path correctly using uh, WAS? So one of the method call is uh, based on the idea of chain of states. Um, when you do Gaussian, many times you, you, when you try to compute the transient state, you gauge the structure. You, you make a structure and gauge that perhaps it's a transient state. But in WAFs, there's method doesn't base on that. We use a chain of state to gauge what is the minimum energy path. So the idea is this. So many times, uh, most of the time when you try to find a chemical reaction, you know what is the reactant. And also you know what is a product. So you know the starting point and know, you know the end point, but you, you don't know what in between. So 
the idea of chain of state is you put kind of like gate state, many of them, not just one, many of them along the path from reactant to product. And then connected each of the state with the imaginary spring. I mean, if you look into the, the calculation term, it's really a spring force, like in spring. Uh, so you can imagine like you have the starting point and you have the end point, and then you have uh, several of bits, like a gate of state, and then each of them connected with the spring. So if you want to find, let's say, let's say, let's say I close my eye, and then I want to find a way from here to the other side, and then uh, what I do is I have a rubber band connected with a ping pong ball, and then I try to pull it to the other side, and basically, the, the ping pong ball is going to go across the, the table, right? Because that, 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 that is the idea of the chain of state. And we use that the same idea in the potential uh, uh, field to get the energy from one to the other side. And the spring force is the idea to keep the image separate, really like kind of ping pong ball connected with the rubber band. Uh, and, and the chain uh, also adjusts. Basically, you do the optimization. So when you have the first and then the end state, you try to optimize the uh, minimum, the energy of all the state. And if all the energy is uh, kind of relaxed, then basically you get the minimum energy path. To look into the equation quite a bit, you can see here, this is the force component based on the elastic band method. So uh, let's say you have the first state, the reaction, and then you have the end of the products, and you have the end of the gate state. Let's look at one of the state I. At this state, you have the force acting on itself. I mean, it's a, it's a typical uh, potential force. And you have the spring force connected to the left gate state and then one to the right gate state. So for each of the force, you have this term, the spring force term added. So you see this is the force term. You have the K is the spring constant, and then you have the coordinate of the, uh, the state I plus one, the gate state I plus one, minus by the, the state, uh, the coordinate of state I. Basically, you get the distance plus the spring force, uh, the spring constant, and then you have the other side of the force connected RI with the RI minus one, also the spring force. So when you do this, basically it's to try to minimize the, uh, uh, try to get the, uh, minimize the spring, e the spring force connecting this term, uh, and eventually the effective force of this system, Fi, is equal to the potential term and the spring force. So this looks like a good idea to find like the path from A to B, but there's another, there's a one problem with this method. So if you imagine like, uh, so let's say this is the potential field. And then you have, uh, let's say this is the reactant, and then you want to go along this corner, and then this is the product. So when you introduce this spring force, basically you modify the actual state. So it could cause the problem of so-called corner cutting. So instead of the, the, let's say the true minimum energy path is the blue line, you go along this way and cross here. So because of the spring force, basically you could get the kind of wrong state. And this is kind of like artifact based on this uh, elastic band method. So people try to improve it using another kind of slightly modified idea, so called a Nash elastic band. Uh, it is slightly more complicated if you look at the equation term, but the idea is only one. So, uh, so elastic band, they really leave the, uh, the, the, the force of the spring to take care of finding the minimum energy path. But in Nash elastic band, uh, you only consider the force acting along the direction of the local tangent of the minimum energy path. So basically, if the force try to push it away from the minimum energy path, you don't care. Basically, you only uh, consider the force along the, the the uh, MEP direction. So this is the tau local tangent here. It's really one that dictated that the force out, out from this direction are not considered. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, it's based on the chain of state.
But let's look into one of the examples. So this is so-called the Muller potentials. Uh, in this kind of like artificial potential, you have three uh, energy minima. One is this blue, one is here, and one is here. So you have three minimum uh, energy minima. So let's say you want to find uh, the way from here to here. And this is, I mean, we already know from beforehand for this uh, system that this is a saddle point from here to here. And this is a saddle point from here to here. So the true minimum energy path is going this way. So you go this, 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 this. So now imagine that you don't know, you don't know this path, right? If, you, if, you, if you're not knowing all the potential, basically you only know this, you know this, and you know this. And then you want to find this, and you want to find a path to this. So how can you do that? So first, like I said, the first case of your system will be like this. So you guess that this one gonna be connected to here based on, this is the case, basically case uh, MEP. And this is the case of the second MEP. This one is close, but this one is kind of a bit far off. So once you have this, then you starting putting the chain of state along the path, right? Let's say you put four of the state, one, two, three, four, and then connected by spring. And this is your case. Uh, for each of the spring, we have the force that I mentioned it to you. Uh, so basically in this sense, if, if you consider this is a mountain and this is a valley, it should, it should go down here. There should be a force acting so that the MEP going this way, all chain of the state moving into this direction. So uh, by updating that the force of this, you will see like uh, the, the, this is the NEB force term the perpendicular term and then parallel term, and this is the actual uh, NDB direction, it's gonna go downhill. And eventually, if you keep updating, 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 and then in the end, the gate state will be going into this kind of direction. So the idea is, the starting point usually uh, come from the, the gates of the two state. And then after you run NEB for a bit, it starts to be moving into this direction and then go into the, the finding the minimum energy path. Yeah, and this is the key idea of, of NEB. And it's nice to be noted a bit that uh, there's also another method uh, in NEB. So uh, sometime uh, when you do uh, NEB, you, um, it's hard to, I mean, the case state that is in the center, it, it's kind of slightly off a bit. So there are methods try to promote of finding more accurate transient states, so-called improved NEB. I, I will show you in the, in the second page. And uh, the NEB calculation in WAS, uh, they, they already have the NEB method built in to the WAS code, but I think it's uh, pretty much a standard that we use the kind of like plug-in, kind of add-on packages by Professor Henkerman from University of Texas at Austin. If you, uh, it's kind of like improving the NEB that uh, original uh, have in original code. Uh, if you want to do this NEB calculation in WAS, you should look at into this website and then try to download the VTST and compile the WAS code with the VTST enable. So what is the VTST code give it to you? First, you have the improve NEB for WAS. For you have the climbing image, not elastic band, CINEB, which I will explain to you next slide, and the uh, method that helps to improve tangent. Um, also, they give you a mean mode following uh, based on the Dimer method and then the Langshaw's algorithm. Uh, you have additional force based algorithm like phi LBGFS, but this is additional one. And also many very good like utility script, NEP make, NEP EFS, NEP converge, which we will be talking a bit by the end of this talk. So I highly recommend you to look at this slide, uh, look at this page if you want to do, let's say, uh, NEB calculation in WAS. So the climbing image, not elastic band, is okay. So let's say the typical NEB is a blue color. You have this is the initial state, and this is the final state, and you have the reaction coordinate from zero to one. Let's say you guess this reaction. 
what happened is, if you look at the highest point, it's not actually at the highest of the minimum energy path, right? You could have this one or you could have this one, but that's not the true transition state. What you want to find is the, actually the center one. So, and there's no guarantee that if you use NEB method, the, the highest point is, is really like the top one. So uh, there's an improved method called climbing image, not elastic band. So the key idea of this algorithm is they try to promote the highest gate state. So in NEB, there's no bias. So what happened in the NEB, you get the result. But for the climbing image, not elastic band, they will try to promote one of the state that is the highest by basically remove the spin force if you are the highest and also uh, inverted the parallel force, so, like really pushing up here. So if you imagine all of the gate state uh, in CINEB, the topmost one will have some artificial force to push it upward, and that, and that they can go up to the, to the top of the hill, and then it's a way to find uh, transient state more accurately. Uh, yeah, like I summarized in this slide, you can look at it later too. Uh, you can see that uh, in, in the equation, you see the plus sign instead of minus sign. So basically, they push upward, and that the image will be going to the, up to the uh, uh, potential field along the band. Okay. All right. Any question in the theory part? Okay. Now we're going to like the practical way to do the uh, NEB calculation in VAS with uh, the VTST added. So if you want to calculate the NEB, there's three things you have to do. First, you have to modify the in-car file, right? Second, you have to generate the postcard. And the final, you have to change something. Uh, you have to remind uh, something on the NEB calculation for WAS, which I will explain on the later slide. But uh, this is the three things you have to, to kind of like consider if you want to run NEB. So the in-car file that you have to chain to run WAS, first is a, a variable called iChain. So iChain, uh, iChain, you have to set iChain to be zero to uh, enable NEB calculation, okay? And then, you have to modify the images uh, parameters. So images is accepted value as an integer. Uh, this is way of you to define the number of image between the endpoint. You remember like uh, the NDB I mentioned, right? You have to have gate state. And uh, the number of image here you specify in in-car is tell the system how many image you want along the line. Okay, and uh, two notable parameter is spring. Uh, this is kind of like a default value of minus, uh, minus five. It's a spring constant between the two images and the unit is EVA angstrom. Uh, this is quite uh, artificial, it's hard to adjust, but I just want you to know that uh, in some of the difficult case when you try to converge the NEB, you may have to modify the spring constant, but most of the time, most of the time, you don't have to do anything. Just leave it at the default. And the other parameter is so-called L-climb. This is uh, to specify that you want to use the uh, climbing image, not elastic band. You put it to true if you want to use it, or no, if you don't want to use it. OK. So next is the idea of the postcard. So why you have to have, uh, if, if you learn from this morning, right, postcard is basically the structure of the, uh, the initial structure of the input of the configuration that you want to do the calculation. But for NEB, because you have so many state, right, you have to have uh, n plus 2 configuration, n plus 2. If n is the number of images you set here, let's say you set the number of images to be n, so you have n plus 2 is the reactant, the, the initial state, and also the final. So you have n plus 2 structure. You have to have the folder so called 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, n plus 1. So if you have images of five images, the case images, you have to have seven. So in the seven, you will have the first one as zero, it's the initial state, and the final as n plus 1 uh, is six, right? So 
yeah, you have to have n plus two kind of like folders starting from zero zero to n plus one. You have to have this name in the in the in the uh, folder that you run was, and each of the folder you have to have the postcard, which the guest state, right? If you don't do anything, you know. I mean, in uh, before you do anything, you know that you have the structure of the zero zero is the initial one, and you know the last one is the n plus one, but you don't know all of the uh, in between. Uh, the good thing is VTHC script can help you to generate it all the structure between uh, two, two kind of like configuration. You can use a uh, command called netmake.pl, it's a post script, and then space, and then you put the postcard of the initial condition, uh, initial configuration, and followed by the postcard of the fi final configuration, and then you specify the number of image. So let's say you want to have uh, five images, you put net make and then postcard the first one, postcard the final, and then you put five. So uh, the net make will make this uh, zero zero to n plus one folder for you automatically. Okay. So this is the thing that you have to do before you start. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, besides from putting the some value in in car file and then generate the postcard. You need to change a few uh, configuration in the in car file as well. So first, the iBron. Uh, if you listen to the previous session, the uh, the iBron that you have to set is two, right? Typically, but because NEB is a nonlinear force optimizer, so uh, the conjugate gradient method converge poorly. So you don't want to use it. Uh, I recommend it. Actually, the VAS manual recommended you to change it to one or three. This is, I think, the uh, quasi Newton method, and I'm not remember what the other one is, but you can try. Usually, I use one, but if one doesn't converge, I use three, but mostly one is okay. And then uh, the second uh, note, the, uh, the second idea should be noted is the number of images should be kept minimum because every Every images you put there, they have to be separately calculated. So, so each of the state will be calculated for force and energy separately. So if you have the five, let's say, images, basically you compute it five times, right? Basically, it's like you compute the single point, uh, the optimization five times. So it's very, very demanding uh, in terms of the, the computation. But also, uh, if you put like too many state, let's say you put 15, the, you can imagine like if you have the rubber band with the ping pong ball, and then you put a lot of ping pong ball, right? It take very long time before the, 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 the band that you set up to be stay still, because there's so many kind of like a degree of freedom. So you try to put it minimally, but not too, not too kind of like too small. Because if you put it too small, what happens is it cannot capture the minimum energy path. So this is actually a kind of art to design how many number of NEB is possible. But uh, for our experience, um, if you're lucky enough to have a lot of machine, eight is good. Eight. But that means you run eight times slower. I mean, you, you spend like uh, eight more machine to do the calculation. Uh, if you don't have it, I think five is uh, four or five is uh, the way to go. Less than that, it's a little bit tricky. It, sometimes it could give you a wrong kind of minimum energy pass. It's, it's very easy to go wrong. So I would recommend you to go either four or five. Okay. Now another kind of like a good note, a reminder here is uh, so when you do the when you do when when you have the um, when you have the initial configuration in folder zero, 00 and then the final state of the 0n plus 1, it would be nice if you copy the out car from the previous calculation. It, it's the, it's the, it's the optimized structure, right? So you copy your out car from the previous optimization into the 00, 00 and n plus 1. So if you do this, there's one of the was uh, command uh, called NEB EFS. I will explain it a little bit later. It will, so it will know the energy and then show the result a little bit more accurate. Uh, it, it, 
it's easier to interpret result, I would say. So usually we put the outcome from the previous result into the zero, zero, and then the outcome from the final to the n plus one. So this is kind of like a good to thing to do. Okay, um, a final note. For the system allowing our, all atom to relax, so imagine you have isolate molecule, you have molecular reaction, let's say. There's no surface or anything. Any atom can move. This is a little bit tricky because of when you compute the NEB, you, um, I would say you have to take care of the, uh, take care on how to create the image configuration because uh, the spring force could distort it, the structure and then uh, it could make the, the, the configuration from the net make could have some problem. But I just recommended you, if you have the system, the reaction of atoms, that can move all the direction, check the vast manual. This is kind of a little bit tricky structure if you have no surface. Okay, so one of the useful uh, NEP calculation, or if you want to see how NEP is calculated to monitor it, uh, we use a VTSC script called NEB EFS. So NEB EFS is a script to check the status of NEB run. Uh, it will check the force, stress, volume, magnetization, and energy of each of the state. So let's say you see this picture. This is the output from uh, when I run NEB EFS of the NEB calculation with uh, the number of images of five. So you have the zero image. This is the initial configuration. This is the final configuration. And this is the gaze calculation. So what you see here, uh, uh, stress, volume, magnetization, and relative energy. So the, the good thing to be noted on two parts, I would say the column of force and the column of relative energy is useful. If you look at the force, this is uh, the, the, um, the maximum force, maximum atomic force on, uh, on image zero. This is the maximum force on image one, image two, three, four, five, six. So this is the uh, maximum atomic energy, uh, atomic force of each uh, image. So when you do the optimization, you basically set the uh, E diff G, E D I F F G, right? So the threshold of how the ionic relaxation is. If you run NEP, basically all the images have to be lower than that, pra, uh, that threshold. So let's say if you run 0 0.05, you have to wait that all images have the force less than 0 0.05. So actually NDB is very hard to converge because all the image have to be smaller than that threshold. Not, not just the computation do take longer because you have many images. And the last column is the relative energy. If you see, this is the, uh, basically they set the energy of the first state to be zero and then you see the energy of the, 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 the gate state along the uh, uh, NEB line. If you plot it, you will get the kind of energy curve, right? So if you plot this, this is the way that uh, we get the, uh, the minimum energy path. And from this point, if, if, from this result, although I think the force is not converged yet because the image number three is still 0, 0, 008, Typically, when I run, I will use the, uh, the convergence of 0 0.05 or less. So this is probably not converged yet. And you see the relative energy here is one. So at this point, basically the, uh, the transition state, the EA, guess EA is about one EV, okay? So this is the way that gives you information of how the NEB is running, how, 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 how close the convergence is and also what is the current state of the, uh, the activation energy EA? Not only that, you can plot it as a graph to see uh, how the force and then the energy evolution as a, uh, uh, the NEP iteration going on. So you can go to the NEP calculation folder and then type nepconverge.pl. They will create it, another folder called wasspgr inside there will be an image like this. So this is showing that uh, the, the running of this system, let's see. So the purple is the maximum atomic force. 
as you can see, the maximum force of this system is about 0 0.1, so it's not converged yet. And you see the energy kind of like going down, but not go down too much. So this kind of like a picture show you how convergence of your run is. And this is pretty hopeless because you run for 500 ionic step, but the force is not converged. Probably you have to, to do something new, in, uh, increase the number of images or something like that. Okay? So, uh, yeah, this would be the end of the uh, NEB calculation in WAS. Any question? Okay, uh, if you guys have a question, you could ask uh, all of us, like any one of us also know of this. Yeah, please drop by and ask, or you can come to me during the break. And uh, we probably go for a break, 15-minute break. Okay, until when? Okay, let's come back here in uh, 2.40. Okay? All right, thank you. Okay, we got the slide on. Okay, uh, the next session will be on the vibrational frequency calculation. Um, we're not going into the detail too much, but I think I give you some rough idea of what what the mode of vibrational calculation is allowed in WAS and how to set the parameters to do so. Uh, so in this section, I will cover the vibrational frequency calculation and also the vibrational frequency calculation method on WAS. Uh, go I'm gonna talk about two methods. One of them is a finite displacement. And the other one, I will talk on how to use the density function of perturbation theory. So some brief basic on vibrational uh, frequency. Uh, let's say you have a diatomic molecules. So the vibrational frequency of the two atoms is actually like a, if you have a spring force, spring connected to atom. And then if you stretch and or you push it closer, you get the, the spring. And the frequency, based on the calculation, uh, will be the frequency of the two atoms. Uh, this is the equation to calculating so. In VAS, uh, you can determine the Hessian metric, or the metric of the second derivative of the energy with respect to the atomic position, uh, or force constant metric. And uh, then you get the vibrational frequency of our atom in the system. Uh, the vibration of frequency calculation in VAS, there's two methods. So the first one is the finite displacement. So finite displacement uh, is kind of easy to use to check for the transient state and then the see the vibration of modes. You can use it to compute the zero point energy or CPE calculation. Uh, the way to set it is set Ibron to five or Ibron to six. I will explain it later. And the second one is the density functional perturbation theory. It's a linear response method. You can use this one to calculate, uh, predict the IR spectrum, IR Raman spectrum and others. Uh, I run to seven and eight for this method. And only support it if you have the WAS version uh, newer than 5.1. So, in the finite displacement method, uh, so basically when you compute the uh, uh, frequency using this method, you are uh, computing the force for of all atom due to the displacement of one atom in one direction. So uh, for example, uh, first you displace one atom in one direction, and then you do it in the second direction, x plus x plus y, and then you do the plus y, uh, sorry, plus x minus x, plus y minus y, plus c minus c. So you displace atomic position, and then you compute the force, and then you get the force uh, of that, and then you go to the next atom, you compute another six uh, force. Uh, the force of the six configuration with uh, you displace atom in X and Y and C in plus minus. So if you have N atom in the system, to compute the frequency calculation, you have to compute six N, uh, the single point energies, based on the 6n displacement. Okay. So what is the finite difference uh, and the frequency calculation can be used for? One is the, to compute the transient state, uh, to confirm the transient state that you get from the uh, NEB calculation. Uh, this is can be confirmed by uh, if you 
if you bring the imaginary, uh, if you bring the tran gauge transient state and you compute the frequency, it should have only a single imaginary frequency. So that, that's the first sign. It showed it's the first order setter point. And the second one is you, if you uh, visualize the vibrational mode, vibrational mode of that along the, uh, of, of, of that state, the, the frequency should go along the minimum energy path. So let's say if you have atom uh, uh, diffused from one point to one point, the direction of the vibrational should be in this direction. Uh, yeah, so this is the one of the things that we do a lot to confirm the transient state. And the other one is we use it to compute the zero point energies. Uh, as we know that uh, uh, the, to compute the zero point energy, we have to use this uh, equation uh, to find the minimum energy state of the system. Uh, okay, so yeah, so basically we need to compute uh, the CPE based on the, the harmonic oscillator that we get from the, the frequency calculation. Yeah, so you get the CPE based on this. And the second method is called the density functional perturbation theory. Uh, so this way we find the frequency based on the electronic structure and energy that change in response to the perturbation or potential like that. And the, in the linear response, the second order change in the energy required uh, the first order change in uh, N, in the density and then in the potential. So, okay, this is wrong a bit. Oh, so this is actually the perturbation though. Uh, so if you perturb the atomic displacement, you get the phonon frequency, you get band structure. If you perturb the uh, electric field, then you get the dielectric constant, bond, effective charge, and infrared characteristic. If you perturb the strain, then you get the elastic constant and PSO electric. So this is kind of like the advanced thing that you can do. You can check uh, this paper for more uh, detail of this kind of method. And there's uh, many tools that help you to compute these uh, properties. For the script that compute the IR spectrum and the Raman intensity, you can visit it, this website and then check it out to download it. And there's the Raman. And also the software, so-called Phonopy, is an open source package to help you to compute, I think, most of the phonon-related parameters. Yeah, I think phonon, phone, and this is like all the software to helping compute on that. Okay. So now, how to set the parameters to compute a finite difference? So you have to change a few parameters. First, you have to change the Ibron. So uh, if you change Ibron to, to, so typically if you do the op, uh, structure optimization, you put Ibron to two, right? But if you want to calculate the uh, frequency based on the finite difference, you set the parameter either five, Ibron to five or six. If you put Ibron to five, basically all atoms are displaced in three Cartesian direction. But if you put to six, they will consider the symmetry of the, of the system. So uh, not all of the uh, displacement will be considered. Um, and another parameter is so-called N3. So N3 uh, tell how many displacement you want to use in each direction of, of uh, per and ion. For example, if you have uh, N3, usually people set N3 equal to two. So N3 equal to two is for uh, each direction, let's say X, you uh, compute the displacement two, uh, uh, you, you do the two displacement plus X and minus X. But if you set N3 to be, let's say four, you compute uh, plus X plus two X and minus X minus two X. So you have to compute uh, many more points but you get more accurate uh, estimation. Uh, another parameter is so-called POTIM. If you, uh, the POTIM will de determine how large is your displacement size. Uh, typical value is 0 0.015 angstrom. Uh, this is from uh, WAFs 5.1. Uh, this parameter is quite okay for most of the atom, except if you have hydrogen, because the hydrogen atom is smaller uh, if you if you have uh, the frequency of hydrogen, you should set potim a little bit smaller, probably like half of this, uh, between 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. 0 0.005, yeah. 
So, so let's say if you have n free equal to two, and then the displacement can be computed based on the potim. If you have potim of 0 0.0015, then you displace in the plus x direction, minus x, plus y, minus y, plus c, uh, minus c, based on the potim and uh, n free. And then uh, you have to set n as the bill equal to one, but it's not gonna run one step, it's gonna run many, many steps, basically six n steps. And another parameter, uh, you can set out epsilon if you want to calculate the bond effective charge. Uh, this is used for the co computer piezoelectric constant. If you don't do anything on that size, you just uh, leave it. You don't have to specify it. And for was parameter, if you want to run the uh, density functional perturbation theory, uh, you can set ibron to be seven or eight, kind of similar to finite difference, but uh, it's seven and eight. So eight uh, for seven, or atom will be displaced. For eight, only uh, symmetry uh, equivalent displacement will be considered. And also you can set out epsilon for this system too. Okay, so this is some example of the output if you look at the uh, outcome. So let's say if you run the frequency calculation and then you uh, let it run until finish and you see the detail in the outcome. At the end of the outcome, will be a little different than the typical optimization run. Uh, at the end, they will show the most information. For example, this is show, uh, so let's say, uh, this is the mode information of mode number 30, is have these intensities, uh, frequency, and in the different unit with wave number and then with the EV unit. And you have the, uh, the uh, atomic coordinate, and you have the displacement. This is the, the direction of uh, each atom on, on that vibrational mode. And actually, if you look at this, uh, just the parameter next to the number, the mode number, you see F slash I. This specify that this is the imaginary frequency. Okay. So uh, one way to, to get like uh, all the mode information is you use the grep. THC because only uh, this line is the only line in the file that have the THC kind of words. What you get here is you see the mode number one to mode number 30, and you see the frequency go from the, the, uh, the highest to the lowest, and uh, also the Im um, imaginary frequency will be least at the end. So in this system, uh, for, for this particular example, you see that uh, they have 30 uh, modes, which the last mode is the imaginary frequency. And I think this is one of the uh, transient state co uh, confirmation. And if this is the case, then it's correct. Okay. Yeah, the frequency calculation will be only that. If you have any question on this? Yes. Just curious, when you do like frequency calculation, yes. Do K points or something have to be increased or decreased or not for this linear response? I'm just curious because... I don't think so. Uh, I think you can... Just use, use the one that's used for the optimization? Because like low frequency mode, you're looking at very small displacements, right? And that's true. But what you usually do is what you use for optimization and... Yeah, that's okay. I, we usually use the same. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's just a question. <laughs> yes. Any other question? And yes, please feel free to ask me or any of our instructor. Uh, so that will be the end of my session for the NEB and then the frequency. Uh, the next will be on...